So, welcome to a beautiful sunrise here in Brooklyn, New York. The video that I want to show you today is about Positron. Now, Positron is from Posit, same company that makes r, &R Studio. And uh, if you've seen their recent conference, you know they sort of going to park our studio. It'll be supported for years and years to come. I think I mentioned um, something about it again during the video. Um, but Positron is their new IDE comes from the same software as what we get Visual Studio Code. So for someone like me who codes in Visual Studio Code all the time, very familiar. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, it takes some getting used to. So what I want to do today is use R. Now remember, Positron is for Python and R. But I want to use Positron and I want to push it a little bit in R. And I want to set, set up an agentic workflow. In other words, I'm going to set up an agent, an AI agent, that's going to create a quarter document for me. And then I'm going to write a prompt so that, that, uh, so that I see some data analysis, um, similar to the data, sets that, the data set that I've used in previous videos. So there's one problem though with the AI, and that has to do with cost. And uh, at the end of the video, I get to that, show you exactly um, you know, why I choose a certain model and what the problem is. I'm sure it's going to be resolved sooner rather than later. Uh, but to set up an agentic workflow is still a little bit, uh, well, it's going to be expensive. You, you're going to have to pay for that. So let's a look at this video. I'll show you how to set up an agentic workflow in Positron. And by the way, I think, you know, start playing with Positron. If you have, let me down in the com uh, tell me down in the comments down below. Um, you know, do you like it? Don't you like it? Uh, have you moved over to it for me? Um, I would say, in, in, as far as R is concerned, 90% plus I'm using Positron instead of RStudio. But put something down in the comments. So here we are in Positron. All I've done is I've opened a folder. You can simply do that by clicking this open button or you can say file, open, etc. Many ways to open. When you just start it, you can actually just drag a folder into this left-hand side panel, but I've opened a folder. Inside of that folder, we see there is only a single file, metrics.csv. The CSV file that you'll see in some of the recent videos that I've been using, very simple, two columns, both of them binary variables, the first one is just a gold standard test indicating whether a disease is present, yes or no. And the second one, a new test for which we want the metrics. The test just comes back positive and negative. And uh, we want to know how good that new test is. So what I want to do is first create a set of instructions for my agent. Now, do notice there right at the bottom that I do have this chat enabled. So just got to make sure that you do have that. I'm going to say a new folder and I'm going to call this folder instructions. So there's my folder and inside of that folder, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call that quarto.instructions.md, a markdown file, quarto.instructions.md. So I've already got some text copy, copy ready to copy and paste. Do remember, it is in the description down below. As you go down to look at that description, do remember, on your way down, hit that subscribe button and leave a like. But more importantly, I think of all, leave a comment. Tell me about your experience. So there we go. I've just pasted my instructions into this markdown file. You can see I start with a little YAML preamble. So the dash, 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 or minus, 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 then apply to colon, and I'm saying quarto, so this is going to, the agent would know this applies to quarto documents. And then I'm using HTML header, so single hashtag or pound symbol, I'm saying quarto instructions. I'm going to say start the document with a YAML header, use title, author, and date in the YAML header, and I give it a little example. So title, author, date, format, execute, and then under that I have echo, warning, and error. So that's just a little example of a YAML header that I want at the top of my quarter document. And then I'm going to say use the R language for code chunks, use markdown for content, create sections with you know two hashtag or pound symbols for headings and three for subheadings, use the minus symbol for uh, bullet points and one dot, etc. for numbered lists, use uh, back ticks for inline code and triple back ticks for code blocks. And then you know if you want an image, what to do. Use that greater than symbol for block quotes and then interpret the results of all analyses and provide insights and use ggplot2 for data visualization. So that's just my instruction to the agent what to do you know, inside of a quarto document. So let's create that quarto document. I'm just going to click here on an empty section. 
by the way, before the, we get there, let's actually just start a session. Just something I still also have to get used to. So let's start that session. And you can see all the uh, versions of Python that I have available for me uh, in this. And then I have version 4.5.1 of R installed. So I'm going to click on that. So you see the R starts down here in the console. No problems there whatsoever. So let's just start a brand new file. Let's just call this testing. Dot QMD. And so there it is. I've got both of these. I'm just going to go back to this instructions file. I'm just going to save it so you can see both are saved, both are open. And now we're going to get come to our chat. Let's click on that button. And I'm going to give it a little bit more space to work in. And now you can see the testing.qmd file is what it's going to look at. I'm going to add some context, another context. I need to give that instructions to this agent. So I'm going to click on add content. I'm going to just say files and folders and just click on that instructions.md file. So you can see they're both there now, testing.qmd and Quarto. Instead of the ask, I'm going to go to agent. And you can see I'm using Claude for Sonnet. So I've got 3.5, 3.7, and then four Opus and four Sonnets. I'm just going to do four, uh, four Sonnet. And I'll, I'll tell you why in just a little bit instead of the Opus. And this is where I'm now going to write my instructions, uh, just my prompt. I've already given the instructions of what to do inside of a quarter document, what I want, and you can put anything inside of, of your instructions. Here, I just want to write the prompt. So here's my prompt. Once again, it's in the description down below. I won't waste time reading this whole thing, but I'm telling it about the file. I'm saying there's 322 participants. I'm telling it what the two columns mean. I think the more information you give in a prompt, you know, the better the analysis is going to be. And then I want, uh, I've just written down in, in, in a numbered list what are all these... Uh, analysis that I want. And then right at the end, I wanted to write a summary and conclusion. And that's it. We are ready just to hit this, uh, the button down here to send. Now, why did I, why did I choose Sonnet 4? Because you've got to pay for this. At the moment, if you want to use Copilot, it'll only do inline, inline code for you. It will not do this agentic workflow. Look at the top here. You see Anthropic there? If I click on that and I say add a model provider, you can see all the only two choices we have is Anthropic and GitHub Copilot. So if you click on GitHub Copilot, it's going to say that it will only do code completions in Positron. So you won't get the agentic workflow. So in Anthropic, so you have to have an Anthropic account, you have to have some money on that account, and you've got to get an API key. So I'll leave that up to you to figure that out. That's not what this video is about. I'm going to assume that you have, you know, you are paying for Claude as not good enough just to pay your $20 subscription or if you're paying more, um, you also have to have some money uploaded that will get deducted. You know, all the tokens that you use, you'll lose a couple of cents every time. And uh, you do need to set up an API key. And you've got to come inside of Positron and set up that API key. And so you can see Anthropic, I am signed in because there's a sign out button. And that's why I'm using Claude for Sonnet because I'm going to pay for this. And uh, that's why I'm not going to click run now because I've already done it. So I'm just going to switch to the quarter document that's already been created. I don't want to run this twice because yeah, I'm paying extra for this. And that is for me a limitation at the moment. Once they allow GitHub Copilot also to work in agent, as an, in, in, in agent mode, yeah, then, then you know, I'm happy to pay for that. I'm already paying for that, by the way. So I would have access to that. And so here you see what happens after you've hit that send button. It's going to take a couple of minutes. It's going to create this plan, read your instructions, then read your prompt, all the analysis that it's got to do. And look at this here as that, uh, that markdown file, uh, the quarter document, I should say. And this is what it did for me. I mean, this was a blank file when it started. The agent did all of this. So you can see I have my YAML header there. No problem. We import some uh, packages there. It reads the file, it does all sorts of things, gives me a nice introduction, frequency and relative frequency analysis, disease status, does all the analysis. All of this is created by the agent. All of this created by the agent. And in the end, there's my little conclusion there and even clinical recommendations. And so what I'm going to do now is just to export this as an HTML file, which I've already done because you can see the HTML file is there. Remember right at the top in our YAML, my format for export was HTML. So let's have a look at that HTML file. 
And here's the HTML file. Have a look at it. I mean, it's fantastic. You've got, of course, in the YAML, change the author to yourself or whatever you want to put in there. Published on the 8th of August, 2025. And look at this. Lovely, beautiful, everything's written out. You know, there's our frequencies, relative frequencies. Nicely done in a plot. For us, a bar chart. The distribution of the test results. Our contingency table, as we can see there. Then the two negatives, false positives, false negatives, two positives. It even gives us a little confusion matrix of those. The joint probabilities, the, the, the four values are there. The marginal probabilities, the four values are there. Beautiful sensitivity and specificity. It's worked that out for us. Sensitivity of 0.75, specificity 0.889. And it tells us what is, if you cannot remember what sensitivity, well, the probability of testing positive when the disease is actually present and specificity, probability that the test is negative if the disease is absent. And so that's what we use to decide on a clinical test, whether we're going to use it or not. We use sensitivity and specificity to make that decision based on a number of factors. And then positive and negative predictive values, remember that is when we've already done the test, now we need to interpret those results. So it finds a positive predictive value of 60.8%, which is uh, fair for our data set because our prevalence was only 18.6%. And then it gives us a very high negative predictive value. Then in my prompt, I also said, well, can you recalculate the predictive values at a 40% prevalence? And for that, it needs to use the law of total probability, which it then correctly does. And we can see the change there. It was 60.8% and 94% for the PPV and PV. And now it jumps up. And of course, if the prevalence increases, of course, the positive predictive value should increase. And then the negative predictive value goes down. And you can see all the analysis that was done there. The summary and conclusion, there's a beautiful uh, table there for us that even gives us clinical significance of the sensitivity, specificity, and positive and negative predictive values. It gives us the key findings, nicely written out, and some clinical recommendations. The test utility, the test shows moderate overall performance with a balanced sensitivity and specificity. Screening consideration, this test is good for ruling out disease with this very high negative predictive value. And as I say, that's what we would do. We decide on the use of a clinical test or in clinical practice based on the sensitivity and specificity. And then the confirmation needs positive uh, results should be confirmed with an additional with additional testing since the PPV is only 60.8%. So if someone comes back with a positive result, there's only a 60.8% uh, probability that they have the dis this disease in the setting that the prevalence remains at 18.6%. And so I think this is a fantastic document, all of this created by the agent. I didn't write a single line of code, not a single uh, line of markdown, anything like that. Let's go back to Positron. There we go. So I think this works exceptionally well, other than the fact that you are still paying for the agentic workflow. So for now, I'm still going to use Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to do all of this in Visual Studio Code because I have access to GitHub Copilot. And so I'm not paying per token for my usage inside of Claude. And Anthropic is, is, is quite expensive. Um, and uh, hence, you know, stick to the uh, Sonnet model instead of the Opus model. So in the description down below, you've got three things to do. Subscribe, like, but leave a comment. Are you using Positron? What do you think about Positron? I mean, have you watched the recent conference in R? where they say, well, basically they're parking our studio. There'll be maintenance updates for a very, 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 very long time. I mean, this is entrenched in industry and it's going to be used for a long, long time. I, you know, much prefer Positron. I'm so used to Visual Studio Code with most of my analysis done in Python, but this is almost Python first. I mean, you can do, you know, all your Python development here. And I think as soon as they, you know, get the AI models on board as soon as you know that we have full access to GitHub Copilot. I think then it's fantastic for me. Then it's done and dusted with our studio. Now in our studio, I can have GitHub Copilot still at the moment, so that's fine. Uh, but I, I have not really figured out agentic workflow there. So the agentic workflow is right here in Positron. But as I say, at the moment you're still paying for it. It's still out of pocket, over and above any kind of subscription that you have. So in the comments down below, what do you think of? are the future of R and the future of Positron.